Hi there. Well, it is good to be back. I am so nervous. Um, <laughs> my mouth is dry. I feel like I'm going to start sweating. I haven't filmed in so long. It took me forever to get it set up today. But never fear, my production value has not gone up since you've seen me last and my brows haven't gotten any better. So not a lot has changed. But for better or worse, I'm going to be doing empties today. And I have a bunch um, before I get into empties, I want to talk a little bit about where I've been, why I haven't been filming, but what I will do is put a little timestamp at the bottom once I go into editing with this and let you know when the empties actually start. So if you don't want to hear any of this part and you just want to get to the empties, you won't have to sit through it. You'll know exactly where to begin. Um, I am also a little bit nervous because I've been wanting to talk to you about why I've been gone and it's sort of a two part thing. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I wanted to present this and I thought, well, I don't want to come across as critical of anybody else and I don't want to say this and I don't want to say that. And then I thought, you know what, I'm not going to be genuine if I don't just say what I want to say. Um, and so if it comes across in a way that's negative, I apologize, but it's just my honest feelings and how I've been feeling. So. The first part of why I stopped filming videos was just for personal reasons. Uh, my family responsibilities have increased quite a bit and it started to feel to me like YouTube was another responsibility and it wasn't fun anymore. And I just really agonized over it because I felt like this obligation to everyone, everyone that's been so um, welcoming to me and supported me and watched my videos and kind to me. And, but then also feeling like I'm beginning to resent it. I don't want to be making videos right now because I have so many other things going on. And frankly, my family needed me more than YouTube did. And it was important to me that I'd be able to focus on that without feeling like I had this other thing that I was needing to do or had holding over my head. So, and I didn't want to be just filming videos that weren't good, not that I do any sort of high production value, but I didn't want to be just kind of phoning things in um, because that's not fair to you. That's not what you come here to see. You want to see something that's um, hopefully well thought out, well presented, and you know makes you feel like you've had time well spent. So that's the first part of it. Just a lot of family responsibilities that have taken my time. Um, and I'm got happy and glad to do so and it is my priority and that unfortunately is not going to get any better so my videos while I'm going to be making videos again I can't do it with any sort of regularity I can't do it on any sort of schedule it's going to be very hit and miss or now and again I guess would be a better way to put it so um, and also I just don't want to feel like I have to um, like do myself up too much. I don't want to have to worry about my hair and makeup. My makeup is a lot simpler these days. As you can see, I'm just doing a really quick, easy look that allows me to get ready and feel good about myself, but not take up a lot of time so I can get to doing some of the other things that I need to do. So that's kind of where I'm at um, with that. And then the second part of my feelings toward YouTube is that I started to become very disenchanted. I was burnt out from a um, content standpoint, but also, to be very honest, very disappointed with the direction I saw YouTube going with regards to some of the content creators I had watched for a long time. And that continues to be the case. I feel disappointed in some people that I've watched for a very long time, that I feel like it's become just one commercial after the other. Some of them are more honest about it than others. Um, I've done a sponsored video with Travel On, but anything that I do sponsored, you're gonna know about it. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna put it down below. If it's an affiliate link, you're gonna know about it. And sometimes I feel like um, maybe they're not legally obligated to do so, but I think from just the standpoint of being honest and respecting your viewers, you need to be a little bit more open about those things. And this is the part where I'm like, well, I really need to edit myself on this, but no, this is just how I feel. And I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to get that low class about it, but, um, it just, I, I'm just over it. I'm done with it. Um, I feel like it's become 
just about luxury items, um, how much you can buy, what you can get next. It's like one thing's, you haven't even enjoyed the one thing you have before you're on to the next thing. Um, and just from my personal standpoint, my life is not, I mean, I don't go out to a job that requires me to dress a certain way. I'm not a world traveler. Um, I don't have a lot of personal obligations that require me to dress in a way that would um, would make me need to change things from season to season. I have to just get things done every day. So for me, and there's nothing wrong with what if that's someone's passion, that's their hobby is fashion and high-end clothes and things like that. But for me, it was like people that I had always watched started morphing into that's what their priority was. And so it didn't fit for me anymore. And there are channels that I've watched for a while that have very much stayed true to who they are. In fact, even maybe uh, become truer to who they are. And I really appreciate that. Um, so, and I might name names on those at some point, not that anyone needs my endorsement, but I, you know, there are some people that I really enjoy watching that I feel like I can, um, aspire to be more like, or that it, um, ins inspire me quite a bit. So I just felt like, you know, I, I don't think you should look at Instagram. I don't think you should look at YouTube and feel not good enough or that, what you have isn't enough, I think, is more what it was. I just started to feel like this seems really shallow. This seems like, you know, and I'm only getting bits and pieces and glimpses into people's life, but it really started to feel like, is this all these people do? Is it just, you know, taking selfies in a mirror with outfits? And, um, and again, I guess that is the path they want to go down, but it just didn't resonate with me anymore. Um, again, I have responsibilities that I need to wear comfortable clothing, so that's what's right for me. And again, I'm so nervous because I this is going to come across as such a catty criticism of other people. I don't mean it to be that way, but there is a part of me that feels like, what are we doing? You know, why has this become so important? Um, and, it, you know, it's not like I'm trying to change the world. I'm not devoting all of my time to helping the poor or something like that. But I also um, just feel like we've really started focusing on YouTube on a lot of materialism and possessions. And not only that, but just mass quantities of it. How many palettes can you have? How many lipsticks can you have? How many purses can you have? Um, so for me, it no longer fits with who I am, what I'm about, um, and what I want to project to you as the viewers of my channel. And I realize by saying all this, it's going to turn some people off, um, and you won't want to watch me anymore. But to be honest, I don't have anything to lose. I've got a very small channel. This is just for fun for me. It's my thing. I think any of you who are wives or moms or caretakers know that sometimes you need something that's just yours. It doesn't have to be a moneymaker. It just has to be something that inspires you creatively and gives you an outlet. So that's all this is for me. So I really don't have anything to lose by just saying what's on my mind. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I want to be authentic. I want to be me. Um, I'm not someone who's trendy. I never have been. I'm not going to be able to provide you with up to the minute uh, makeup trends, fashion trends, home decor trends. Um, and I also wanted to say that when I started feeling this way last spring, I really wanted to take the time to make sure that there wasn't something else going on. We had some major life changes with my father-in-law's illness and passing. I thought, okay, let me think about this. Am I evolving or am I depressed? I really wanted to think about that because you always hear when people have depression, it's not something I've struggled with. So I was like trying to look out for the symptoms because I always hear something about um, maybe you don't enjoy activities that you enjoyed before. So I thought, okay, I need to think about this. Am I depressed? Is that why I'm feeling this way? Or is this really an evolution of who I am? So the longer this went on, the more entrenched it. I felt the more it felt comfortable. It felt right for me. We have done, my husband and I have done so much decluttering of this house and I've always considered myself allergic to clutter, 
but I realized that we had so much stuff that we just didn't need. We have made mass donations to Goodwill. Um, we've gotten rid of clothes and just things, just clutter, um, redundant items, extra kitchen items, just stuff, and it feels amazing. Um, I love it. I don't regret a thing I've gotten rid of. And these were things that were so important to me at the time. And another video I actually thought about doing is the makeup that I've chosen to keep. Because I still have quite a bit. I have more than what most people would need. But I got rid of a whole lot of it. And I felt very disappointed in myself for having bought so much of that at the time. But I also give myself a little slack and say that's what I really enjoyed at the time. And it was what a lot of people were doing. And I think um, I very much fell into that. It just seemed like the right thing to do. And it made me happy, so whatever. Um, but now I've scaled that down quite a bit. I've kept enough variety where if trends change or looks change and I want to tweak my look just a little bit, I've got enough variety to do that. But um, I've gotten rid of quite a bit. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm nervous, so like I said, I have a dry mouth. I got a little water here. I didn't want to do a ton of editing with this today because I just want it to be natural. As you can see, I'm totally unprepared. So anyway, I think I've rambled enough about that. That's kind of where I'm at. And a lot of you in comments kind of were telling me that's where you were at too. I was hearing a lot of feedback that said, we don't care about your production value, we just want you to keep it real as you know, kind of a um, breakdown of that. And I'm happy to do so because that's where I'm at. So when I prepare for a video, I'm gonna be wearing what I wear during the day. I'm gonna be doing my makeup, how I do my makeup for the day. It's not gonna be um, specifically geared toward just making videos. It's going to be just an extension of my normal life but setting, uh, setting aside some time to make a video. So I hope some of you are still with me on that. And um, I also have to say, so about a month ago is when I wanted to get back into making videos and I started to feel that tug and that pull and missing it. And no kidding about that exact same time, I got emails, I got Instagram messages, um, I got comments on older videos asking me to come back. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe People are still thinking about me after all this time. I haven't made a video, I think, since June of last year, so almost a year, and people are thinking enough of me to reach out, and I can't tell you how much that touched me and made me feel good. Um, I just, so thank you. Thank you so much for that. Very uh, sincerely, I do mean that. So, um, oh, and then I posted an Instagram comment the other day to kind of, you know, talk about a, a product that I do like right now, a shampoo that I found that I'm madly in love with. And I did that, I got some comments, I posted, and then yesterday I went into my computer and I routinely clear cookies, so I did that. And it makes me log back into everything, which I did, and I somehow disabled my account, or they did, and I can't get back in. So I am completely locked out of my Instagram account. It says my name doesn't exist. So I just didn't want you to think that that was something I've done as part of my, you know, oh, strike against YouTube. Um, but, so it's, it's happened. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back in. I put in like a help ticket and everything. So bear with me on that part. I have no idea what I did, but it's bad. So where are we? Oh my gosh, 13 minutes in. Is that right? I can't really see. That's the other thing. I need glasses bad. Um, so that's where I've been. And now let's get to the empties. Thank you for bearing with me. All right. So as always, I have beauty and lifestyle empties. Um, more beauty than anything. It's been quite a while, so I've got a pile of them. The first thing I have on top, though, is a household empty. I tried this because I saw some buzz about it. It's the Persil laundry detergent. It did a good job, but I don't really care for it. Tide HE, it, Tide Original HE is what I've always used, and I still like it. Um, I thought this smelled okay, but it just wasn't my favorite, and I think it's just not what we're used to. My understanding is this is more popular in Europe or maybe the UK, so um, it's, I think detergent tends to be one of those things of kind of maybe what your mother used or what you grew up with, and so I'm a Tide girl, I guess. So I would not repurchase that. Something I have used over and over and repurchased now as my Holy Grail cleanser is Cetaphil Daily Facial Cleanser. This is what I use exclusively in the morning, um, sometimes in addition to an exfoliant, but 
I, when I don't have makeup on, this is what I use. And I've actually started using it a bit at night as well. We've had a very unusually dry, cold, well, not cold. We've had an unusually dry winter here in Florida. And so um, some other cleansers are really drying out my skin. I always get a lot of peeling right around my nose and everything. So I've been trying to make sure I don't use too hot of water and I don't use a harsh cleanser. So I love that. I have, oh my gosh, so many, three packs of Pond's Original Fresh Makeup Remover Wipes. I use these every evening, um, or I use a makeup remover wipe every evening. These are nice. I love the fresh smell of them. I would buy them if it's what's available, but I'm actually trying out a micellar water from Garnier right now. I just wanted to do something different, and I've heard a lot of good things about those. So um, these are fantastic, but I don't need to try anymore right now. Um, I also have, let's see, an evening soothe version. Also, same thing, really nice. And then of course, Trader Joe's version. I do have some of these I need to go through. I love these things. You've heard me talk about them forever. They're just uh, generously sized, very soft, do a great job, don't irritate my skin. I have a Dove Oxygen Moisture Shampoo. This is great. It's one of my favorites from the drugstore. I rotate through about three or four different shampoos just to kind of keep my hair guessing. Um, my friend Ellen and I have talked about this a lot. You always just want to keep your hair not knowing to what to expect because it seems to work with you a little bit better if you're not using the same thing all the time. Um, and while I do love this, the herbal essences that I posted on Instagram the other day is my new holy grail. I actually like it better than any of my higher end um, Ulta type shampoos and things. I so this is nice with the herbal essences. I bought a backup when I was just barely into the first one just in case I couldn't find it again or something. So, um, and I also have a Pantene shampoo. This is the Color Preserve Volume. I didn't really care for it. My hair is already fine and limp and this didn't help matters at all. So it was okay, but I wouldn't repurchase it. And then I have a Tresemme Tray 2 Hairspray. This is the number five, so it is freeze hold. I don't think this is a freeze spray, but um, I never understood why people like Tresemme so much until I got the five. And I think for me, this is just the right amount of hold. It's been great, at least through the fall and winter where we don't have a humidity. And really with the humidity, once that comes in the summertime, I'm not sure anything's gonna really help hold my hair in place, but I really do like this and you can't beat the price. So I do repurchase this over and over. I've also got a Neutrogena oil-free eye makeup remover. I do like this. I think my favorite's probably the Lancome or the Clinique Take the Day Off, I think it's called. But this does a good job. And again, you know, price friendly. Oh, I think my or not my computer, I think my camera is maybe out of memory. Hold on just a second. Okay, I think I'm back in business. It's even tired of listening to me ramble today. Okay, I have a CeraVe Renewing SA Cleanser. So this has salicylic acid in it. I love this stuff. It's really cleared out my skin. I still struggle with acne, even though I'm getting older. Um, but I've really learned to calm it down. I'm having a breakout right now that I can't really explain. But my skin, uh, it's not going to feel like I'm being honest at this point. My skin has been great lately, up until right now, of course, because I want to film again. But what I do is I will take in the evening or, well, sometimes in the morning too, I will do a pump of this and then add one small pump of this to kind of cut it down a little bit. And it seems to do a good job. I've had to cut back on the salicylic acid because of the dryness right now, but I really like the combination of those two. Let's see what else I've got here. I have a Dove shower foam. This is good, but I really prefer their regular body washes specifically for me the sensitive version so I don't think this is something that I'll be buying again. This is the holy grail of mine. This is the Aveeno Sheer Hydration. I buy this over and over again. I love it and I have something funny to tell you about this. So um, some of you that follow me on Instagram may know that in September, October, I had an accident on my bike. I fell off and fractured my scapula. Two fractures and a chipped bone. Oh, it's terrible. Um, but I say that to say that during that time, I think it was about three weeks, my doctor told me not to drive because I was all slinged up with this, um, what do they call it, sling and swath. So I had to keep it really close to me. And he said, you can't drive until you can react. So I really needed to have both hands. So I didn't drive for about three weeks. 
And during that time when my husband was working and stuff, I couldn't make it to the store to get everything that I needed. So I ran out of my CeraVe lotion. And so I thought this is probably gonna be a really bad idea, but I'm gonna start using this on my face. And it's amazing. Now this is what I use on my face during the day, sometimes in the evening when I'm not using my Retin-A or something. My skin cleared up. Using this in combination with a gentle cleanser, my skin actually improved using this. I think the CeraVe was too much. My skin's oily um, in places in my T-zone, and that's where I primarily break out, and I really think the CeraVe was just too much hydration for me. So I um, I'm as shocked as anyone. So I started using this because of that fracture, and now that's all I want to use. So face and body, this is fantastic. Not Probably not if you have very dry skin. I also have an Aveeno Positively Smooth Shave Gel. I think I bought this one because it says helps you shave less often, but I never really could figure out um, how it was supposed to do that, and I don't know that it did, but it was fine as a shave gel. I usually have pretty good luck with Aveeno products. I think they're pretty good. And there's another one of those, so I obviously I liked it enough to purchase it again, but I'm not loyal to it. Um, I've got an Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Body Wash. I already have a replacement. I usually keep this on hand. One thing I don't like about it though is it tends to make my shower kind of slippery, so it's a little bit dangerous to use, but I like that it is soothing to the skin. It doesn't dry it out or anything like that. And I love the smell. It's just something I'm used to, so I will probably repurchase it, but just give your shower a rinse before the next person comes in if you're going to use it. Okay, I have been on a kick this past year with the Dove Dry Sprays. I really love it. I don't like the sort of powder that flies around, but I do think it works really well. So I have three, four containers of the Dove Dry Spray. So this one is Beauty Finish. It's a more of a florally fragrance, but I like it. Um, this one was Original Clean. This is my favorite. It smells more like uh, the original Dove soap that you'd be used to. And that's why I have another one of those. And then this is Sheer Fresh, which I didn't like at all. Some of the fragrances are very hit and miss for me. Some I love and some I don't love at all. Um, I've got a Clinique Sonic Facial Soap. This is what I use exclusively if I'm gonna use my Mia. Um, I've kind of gotten out of bad habit or gotten into a bad habit of not using my Mia lately, so I've been a little bit lazy about that, but this creates a nice creamy buffer between the bristles and my skin, and I've tried using the Mia with my Cetaphil, and it's too scratchy. I mean, my skin will be all red after I use it, even with the sensitive brush head. I've got some Beauty 360 cotton squares from CVS. Love these things very much like the Shiseido facial cottons. I've got another CeraVe uh, Renewing SA Salicylic Acid Cleanser. I have a Pureology Pure Volume. Is this, this is the conditioner, I think. I would not repurchase this. I could not stand the smell of these two things. I thought it worked okay, but for the price, I didn't think it was anything special, and I really despise the smell of it. So I've got a CeraVe PM. Um, I did repurchase this before I figured out that the sheer, the Aveeno Sheer Hydration was actually what was best for my skin, but I don't regret it because I will use it on my eyes or just even as a hand cream or something, so it's still really good. It's just not, not what I need. I've got a Philosophy Renewed Hope in a Jar. I love this. This is something I have repurchased, I think, for the third time. It does have a strong fragrance, but I happen to really like it, and I think it does a good job on my skin. I, I really enjoyed using that since I found it. I have an Olay uh, Revitalizing Foaming Cleanser. This is something I use um, if I don't feel like getting the Clinique Sonic Facial Soap, or if I just need something quick. I've remembered it the last minute at the grocery store because I can find this at the grocery store. It smells nice, um, it does an okay job, it doesn't create quite that buffer that this product will, but it does a decent job. I've got another um, Neutrogena oil-free eye makeup remover. I have a Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Sunscreen F55. Because we've been doing a lot of biking, I really slather on the sunscreen. I like this dry touch because it just um, you know makes your skin feel dry and soft, not greasy and slippery and things like that. So I have another Trader Joe's facial wipe. 
And I've got a Laura Mercier Flawless Skin and Face Polish. I love this, but I've not repurchased it. Um, someone left me a comment. Um, this is something else. I've been trying to become more environmentally conscientious and thinking about chemicals and um, maybe how some of the products I use affect the environment. I am by no means, <laughs> no means someone that can preach to anybody else about this because I still do a million things that are not good for uh, the environment, chemically speaking or pollution speaking. But I do pay attention when you guys leave me some comments. So someone mentioned that the beads, um, I can't remember if it's silica beads maybe, was affecting the sea life and causing um, something, some pollution of the oceans and causing, I think, to strangle or um, something, the sea life. And so that's something that bothered me and I thought that is something I can definitely make a change on. So I bought the Dermalogica daily superfoliant. I think there's a daily microfoliant and I bought this superfoliant and I'm really happy with it. So this is good, but I probably won't purchase it again, trying to be light green, I guess. I've got a Dior Lip Glow. Buy it over and over again. I'm almost out. I'm hoping that Sephora does their 20% off spring sale soon and I will get yet another one. And I have the Secret Clinical Strength deodorant. I went through a phase at the end of last summer where I broke out in a really bad rash underneath my arms. I guess it was like a prickly heat type of thing and I couldn't use any of my regular deodorants, but I wanted to use something obviously. And this stuff is really good. It can be a little more difficult to find. It's hypoallergenic and unscented, but man, does it do a good job. It keeps you very dry and it has no scent to compete with anything else and didn't irritate my condition. And I have four tubes. This is holy grail for me, obviously. I have four tubes of Maybelline, the Colossal Volume Mascara. This is the waterproof version. And I usually get it in, oh my gosh, I cannot read this. Where are my glasses? I get it in black, but there's a glam black that I don't get. This is, I think it's called Classic Black. If I could read it, I would tell you. Um, but I think this does a fantastic job. I think it gives me more volume and lift than any other mascara that I've used, high-end, drugstore, or whatever. So obviously I keep buying it. I have an out the door. This is my favorite nail polish top coat. I've run out of it. I need to repurchase it, um, but I've loved this for years and it really does dry your nails quickly. Not necessarily 100% gouge proof, but definitely enough to where you can do, you know, get dressed and do a little bit of things without worry. I have a Urban Decay Naked Lipstick. This is what I'm wearing today. I love this lipstick, but it changed when they changed their name and packaging. It went from Urban Decay Revolution Lipstick, I think, to Vice Lipstick, and the Naked got a little bit cooler, and I liked it a little bit warmer. So I repurchased it in the new version, but then I also repurchased it on eBay in the classic version. I doubt I'll be able to do that again because it's gonna be very hard to find, but um, I just think this is a really good go with anything kind of flattering for everyone lipstick. I have a Bite Agave lip balm. I almost said lip mask because that's what I've always bought. I bought the balm, um, used it mostly except for this little bit. It got too dried out to use, but I wouldn't buy it again. I don't think it was nearly as moisturizing as the lip mask, which I would repurchase, but this. Um, I didn't enjoy as much so I think I liked it in the beginning and then the as the product sort of aged a little bit it got harder to use and so no. I tried this Maybelline the Falsies Volume Express. I didn't like it. It felt a little clumpy. Um, I mostly went for it because I liked the other Maybelline so much and I liked the curved brush and I thought maybe it would kind of get in there a little bit better and coat the lashes but and it ended up just not working. So I think for me, a straight brush is probably best, which is what this one has. And I just wipe it off a little bit before I use it, especially the end, and then I can really get in there and try to get every single lash, and that works out for me. We're down to just a few things, I promise. So I've got a Clinique lip balm. This is the Repair Wear Intensive Lip Treatment. This was a really good balm, but I don't know that I would purchase it again because I think I have things that I like more, but it is a nice one. And I have an Anastasia Brow Definer. This is what I am still using. 
I really like it, but I have brow problems. I am brow deficient. I think it's always going to be that way. They're not even there until I pencil them in, and then they're never even. I feel like no matter what I do, they're never going to be right, so I've... I've accepted that. It's who I am, but at least this fills it in and gives me the appearance that I have something. I also have the Brow Wiz, which I like. This is a lot finer. I think the Brow, I get them confused, the Brow Definer is a little quicker just because it covers more ground more quickly. I also have a NYX Brow Pencil, but oh goodness. Um, I really do prefer the Anastasia. I think it's worth a little bit of extra money and I always stock up on it when there's going to be an Ulta or Sephora sale. So it's not um, that big of a deal, I think, to just go ahead and plump for the one that you really like. And then I have a Lancome Sills Booster XL. This was obviously a sample I got at one point. I like it. I think this does a good job, but I really don't think I need it anymore for two reasons. One, because I think this Colossal Mascara does a good job on its own. And I started using a year and a half ago or so the uh, Lash Serum. Um, it's escaping me right now, but it really made my lashes grow and darken and thicken just a little bit, but mostly length. So this isn't something that I would feel I would need to buy anymore. So I've tried to simplify my daily routine as much as possible. So that's it. That is everything that's in my bin. Thank you if you're still here and not asleep for sticking with me through this video and through the past year of or almost year of my absence so leave me comments down below i will definitely read them all and i will do my best to answer some of them but i appreciate you all so very much and i hope to see you very soon bye, -bye.